we need our women to be able to build us up in that way. Like those intangible things Mm -hmm. to be able to empower us, to Mm -hmm. encourage us, Mm -hmm. to affirm us. Mm -hmm. And also to be able to hear what the man is not saying. Oh, I say this all the time. Because most men are not going to directly, directly communicate and express themselves yeah, we're starting to evolve a bit. And, you know, men now, uh, the, the the newer generation of men are getting a little bit better at communication. But this, this is new. Yes. Men just started talking like 10 years ago. What's up, guys? And welcome to another episode of It's Giving. I am your host, Sarah Fontenot. And if you have not yet, please hit that button below, get subscribed, hit that little bell so you get a notification with each new piece of content because every day we are bringing you something good for healing, for transformation, for love, for peace, a little bit of drama, and definitely some entertainment. And if that sounds like something for you, then you need to make sure to join this family. Now, today we are joined by an incredible man. When I tell you he is one of the counterparts, one of the founders, one of the creators of one of the hottest podcasts. Okay. If you're on this podcast, I'm sure you know of his podcast. Okay. We got one of the host founders, creators of the hardly initiated podcast, Tyshawn. <laughs> also speaker, also motivator, also game creator, also transformative coach and leader. I mean, you got all the things really and truly. I just love when a woman speaks life into me. <laughs> just keep keep going. Can you, you get you any more? Just keep I mean, going. Do you want me to keep? I could keep going. It's really easy, actually, to be honest. <laughs> we, we, we good. I, I appreciate that. Though. Of course. I'm that. so happy to have you here today. Yes. I'm blessed to be here. We've been, you know, uh, working this out back and forth now for the last few months. Yes. So what's happening? Finally. It's here. It's about that time. Yeah. Okay. So I have to ask you, mm-hmm. if this chapter of your life were called, it's giving blank and you have to fill in the bank, what would it be called? And you have to say, it's giving. Ah, uh, man. It's giving transformation. Ooh. Break that down. Yeah. Transformation. Um, I'm just having to really put myself in a position to be a new person to get to the next level. Mm. So like like right now when I first came here, I told you I'm on a fruit and veggie fast. Yes. No meat. Yes. No nothing. I but love even that for you. even down to the detail of being disciplined with my diet mm. and what I put into my body, what I put into my mind, all of these things now are required to be able to get to the next level. So I've been having some real conversations with, you know, my my business partner, my mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. And even myself, mm-hmm. when you start to, I don't know if anybody fast or detox, but when you start doing that, you go face to face with some demons <sighs> and your weaknesses. And that's really where I need to be right now because yeah. the next level is all behind those demons. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. And it's also terrifying. Yes. I find that the times where, you know, I'm seeking that next level, seeking that next level, it's crazy because you got to be careful what you ask for. You got to be careful. What has been the biggest and the most challenging part of this journey? You know, if I'm thinking the most challenging part of the journey is just really being honest with yourself. Oh, my God. That's really what it is. I don't know if a lot of us are very honest about where we are, Mm. what we're struggling with. Who we are. Who we are, what it takes to get to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Because in order to do that, you got to be very critical with yourself. You got to be a little dissatisfied with yourself. Yeah. And, you know, it's a thin line between being dissatisfied and just beating yourself down. Mm. So you have to figure that out. And that's honestly what I struggle with a lot, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I struggle with making sure I'm inspirationally dissatisfied, Mm -hmm. right? But also still content. With where I am in life. Yes. Because if you go too far to either side, you're going to fall off. Oh. So it's about really having that dance of making sure you still want more for yourself, but you're still blessed and thankful for where you are. Yes. And if you can figure that out, you're going to be able to climb to the heavenly heights or wherever you're trying to get to in peace. Yes. But, you know, again, either one side, now you throw it off. It's challenging. And it's funny because... I don't think we lie to anyone as much as we lie to ourselves. Mm. 
we literally create, it's like inception in our brains where we create these lives that we live inside. And I, it's funny because I almost said lies, but essentially it's the same. These Most people are living a lie. People are living inside of a I lie. Like you know, people are, are pretending to be something that they're not. And look, this is the thing until you get on that healing journey, which is a forever thing. We're all always growing and, and learning and expanding and evolving, hopefully. Um, yeah. <clears throat> But until you really start having those hard conversations with yourself, it is like sad. Mm -hmm. Life feels unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's no purpose. And I feel like that's when we fall into that lull of life, like Napoleon Hill calls drifters. The drifters. Mm. What you know Napoleon Hill? What? I like that. Like, Don't have a book read off with me, okay? <laughs> I read for uh, real, okay? Yes. Don't let this hair fool you. I like that. I like that. <laughs> okay, so you're on a fruit and veggie fast. Yes. What's normal? Like you eat meat every day? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I eat meat regularly. Yikes. How long have you been fasting? Three days. Oh. Well, actually, last week, I kind of eased into it. I'm usually cold turkey, but last week, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put myself in a position to absolutely um, take the carbs out my diet. I went real light on the meat. Yeah. I probably ate meat only once a day. Wow. Oh, it's usually more than that. It's usually more than that, you know? And, and when I say meat, even like- dairy like i might eat a lot of eggs in the oh, morning okay, okay. you know and all of those things constitute because I've, I've removed everything yes so i put myself in a position to only have like one of those meals for the past week and this week now bam took it all out fruits and veggies fruits veggies and water do you ever get headaches yes okay <laughs> it's like no it's a drug it is a drug food is the worst drug it's food. sugar sugar is the worst drug. sugar sex yeah all of those are drugs and things we use to forget what the hell is really going on yeah. in this world. And the, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I could take sex out of my life way easier than I could take food. So this actually was the hardest demon for me to conquer. Really? Absolutely. How is that and why is that? It's just my number one appetite because they're all appetites. Yeah. You know, things that you desire, yes. things that you want, crave, things that you use to help balance your emotions, mm. you know, and your, your mood. Yes. We use all of those things. It's very true. So it's very important to fast from all things that, have that a can grip influence on you. it mm -hmm. just to make sure you're still in control and have your power. Yes. But see, with me, food. Think about it. I'm not, listen, I'm not smashing all day. <laughs> but, the, you know what I'm saying? but based on my mood, I'll eat something right. right now. I need some sugar. Yeah. I need some fried. Right. I need this. I need that. It's the, that's the, I'm telling you, that's the hardest thing all of us struggle with. I, I'm the complete opposite. Really? Yeah. I, 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 so, food... you're, so you're sex addict. No. <laughs> no, I'm saying, honestly, I feel like I could probably cut anything out of my life. I feel like, like, like food gets in the way. You just remember, remember we just talked about living in these lives. <laughs> now here's the no, thing. I'm telling you, food gets in the way. Okay. When I'm working, ask my team. They know. They'll be like snacks. You know, I, I, it gets in the way. I'm, if I could okay. never eat again and still be a healthy human, I probably would because I'm such a workhorse. I'm in it. I forget to eat. Okay. It's, okay. it's, I'm the opposite. And even when I do eat, I live off of salads and smoothies. So you saying fruits and veggies, I'm like, eh, it's my lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> like that's very normal for me. See, the thing about it is I hear a lot of people say what you're saying about, you know, like I'm, I'm in control of this and I'm in control of that. Not saying you're not. Yeah. But the biggest thing you have to do is you got to put that shit to the test. Yes. So the only way you know, uh -huh. have you ever met a weed head? Oh yeah. Several. A weed head will convince you all the ways weed is bettering their lives. For sure. They'll tell you, I'm smarter on weed. I think better on weed. Weed helps me pass my tests. Yeah. Weed helps me. Uh, it's a meal replacement. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a meal replacement. Yes, yeah, fact. They'll tell you, but one thing they can't do is remove it from their lives. Right. They can't fast from it. Yeah. But that's the only way to really know. So look, for you and anybody else yeah. <laughs> that think that you're real strong. I'm pretty strong. Look, do it in real life. You know what my vice is? Cause, because I don't eat meat. Um, I don't eat like, you know, chicken, pork, beef, any of that, even seafood. I cut seafood out like two years ago. Okay. And so when it comes to even alcohol, like I stopped drinking for years. Now that I've been in Atlanta, like I'll have, I'll go out and I'll have a drink here and there, but it's okay. seldom, you know, I don't need to drink. I'm over here like, what is my vice? I think the only vice that I have is my family. 
And when I say vice, it's because a vice has the opportunity to cripple you, right? Mm -hmm. So I will put my family sometimes even at detriment to self before myself. No, I don't like that one. Uh, It's the truth, though. Now, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of when you're in an interview, what's your weakness? My weakness is that I love too hard. No, no, you know, if I, but what is your weakness? Give me an idea. Hold on, wait, we're not going to just go past your vice. I'm just saying that's the only vice I can think of. Is that your family? Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying that because a lot of us can't overgive and neglect self when given to others. I don't think I ever really neglect self. Okay. But I will neglect things in my life for For my family. family. Man, you really think that's the worst thing going? Like, that's I the, really don't think anything vice. else has a cr- like. Nothing has a crutch on me. Nothing. 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 God. Okay. That really okay. like I say this all the time, and you can challenge me if you want. I always say like I'm incorruptible. I'm gonna do what I want to do if I want to do it, how I want to do it. See, the reality of it is, I don't even know enough about you, Sarah, to be able to challenge you. <laughs> I'm gonna just have to take your word for it. You know who is gonna know? Who? Your ex. Oh, ask him. <laughs> He'll tell you all about See, it. See the man that's in your life. Yeah, that's up around you. That's up inside you. Ooh, right, and all of the above. Yeah, that person knows the truth. I, I don't. I don't got the answers. Way no, I'm. 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 I'm very much unapologetically myself, but in a very sweet, kind way. Okay, it's it's a little. I'm gonna take it. I, mean, I got to take it. I, I can't. You know. It just is what it is. It is what it is. It is what okay, it is. Okay, guys, look. Her only vice is that she loves her family way too hard. I, well, that's her only vice. She's vice. incredible. That's only no, no. I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm incredible. I got. I got. Stuff. I'm not. I'm crazy. I'm touched for sure. See, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, Tyshawn, how are you crazy? How would your woman or past woman or any woman say that you are crazy? They wouldn't use that. No. What nah, term would they, they use? They wouldn't use crazy. They will probably like the negative. We talking negative. Negative. They would say he can be a bit disconnected sometimes. Because uh-huh. you're focused on work. <sighs> yes, um, it could be a bit because sometimes I could have a habit of not being present. Mm. Mind is up here thinking about what's happening tomorrow, what's happening next week, what's happening next month. Um, is that during like a hangout time? It it could be oh. at any time that thought happens. Oh, you know it could be. I'm definitely working on that. Um, that's probably the biggest one. My emotions, I can I can disconnect from my emotions rather easy, a little okay. bit easier than I probably should be able to. So your cutoff game is strong, is what you're saying? It's strong. <laughs> It's really strong. I used to take pride in that, but now shout out to the shout out to the show. We didn't had multiple therapists yeah. and coaches come on and really really rip my ass balls. <laughs> and like really let me know that, bro, like don't take pride in that. The reason you're like that is because of all the things that you've, you know, experienced. Give it's like, me an it's example. Like fear. What is the what is the biggest thing that makes you be able to say like I'm done? Because maybe you're about to put me on game right now. You're about to rip me a new one. So my, oh my God, my ex, I dated a young lady Mm -hmm. for a few years Mm -hmm. and I didn't know we were surface level. Oh. I didn't know, I didn't know it was a surface level relationship. Like We genuinely like each other, even loved. Yes. And when I say surface level, I mean, we didn't find out deeply what we were dealing with. Oh. And when I found out what she was dealing with. I didn't want to deal with that scope of work. Oh. Yeah. Like, you know, mental health and things. And it was a, it was some, like, I would have really had to be patient. Mm. I would have had to be deeply a part of a healing process. Mm. But how did you not know for years? Not one. I wasn't as intentional as I should have been entering a relationship. Mm. You see, that's the thing. When you come into a relationship with a good time mindset, mm. you don't really care about, you're not really looking at her for certain qualities. Over time, that mindset came in like, you know what? Okay. You kind of dope. You kind of dope. Yeah. And now when you start saying you kind of dope, you need to start vetting her differently. Mm. And I didn't do that. 
Mm. And we just was, I was in a phase of my life. This is when I just got into entrepreneurship. I just quit my job. My ex woman that I was with before was really against it. She wasn't very, like, she wasn't really motivating me to attack life in this way. Where here I had this young lady who was so supportive of me Mm. attacking in this way, who was also on her journey. We were aligned in this way. And it felt right because she was now an aid to this new season of my life. Mm. But it fit chapter three, just not chapter four. (laughs) Yeah. That's just kind of what it was. I'm not mad at that. It makes sense. It makes it, sense. Yeah. So do you feel like the essence of a woman, like the divine energy of a woman makes a difference for you as a man? Oh, 1000%. Like you believe that there are intangible things that women possess that men need? That was like the exact real. Like, did you write that down? No. Like, that's the exact. <laughs> no, what? Yes. I said before? No, well, I mean, you went viral. You went, for, don't act like we don't know you went crazy viral. Shut up. We, we, so, <laughs> Yeah, Sarah's been all over the place. Yeah, she been on y'all timeline like not because yeah, but yes, yes, I do feel that way. Honestly, I, I was in full agreement too. You were, yeah, absolutely. I, I really, I don't vet women for anything tangible, and you shouldn't. I believe. But you know what? That's because you are a masculine man and masculine energy isn't looking for anything tangible. Masculine is looking for feminine. Actually, I'll take that back. Okay, go ahead. Let's go. Let's talk about it. The look. It's the look. Ooh. That's that's where we tangible as men. Oh. We got to... Because, and you know, it's crazy. Like, the way you maintenance... I could just tell so much about the way you maintenance yourself. This is a fact. The way you, the way your body looks... Mm. Right, what you putting inside of your body, and as I get more health conscious, I just get like I start getting kind of bougie. I'm like, what? What's that? Larry, I don't want that. But don't take Tylenol. <laughs> I don't even take Ugh. medicine. Give me some lime juice over there, baby. right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm even really being much more intentional about it, and that's the thing. It's it's it matters. As it does much matter. as we don't want to talk about it, it absolutely matters. Yeah. So a look is important. So I say this all the time and you know, it just, it is what it is. It's a cold, hard fact. Now beauty is absolutely in the eye of the beholder, but there is no doubt. And I'm speaking to uh, my belief of masculine men because I am (laughs) not a man. So let me not speak for the men, but I feel like masculine men, the first thing that they look at is the physicality of the woman. What she looks like is the first thing. Now her character is what keeps him. 1000. So So do you feel like it's a certain look? Like, do you think most men want a woman that has a BBL? No, they don't. Now we can't. This is the thing. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. What we lust and what we love is not the same. Oh, break that down. So yes, I would lust all day on a BBL. I'll smash it. I'll take it home. I'll have a good time with it. But me personally, I'm not going to keep a woman that is and here's the reality of the situation i play i i I just know i'm gonna get blessed with some daughters oh i just know that's gonna happen yeah i lived a life where that's just probably gonna be the cosmic karma put upon me (laughs) to bring some women into this world (laughs) and i'm okay with that and i'm ready okay and the reality of the situation is i think it's confusing as hell for a young lady to get the DNA from her mom and see that her mom wasn't satisfied with the DNA she had herself. Oh. I think that causes massive confusion into a young woman's body. Mm. To know that, like, think about it. If she can't look at her mom and think that, and think what she has is, if her mom didn't think what she had was beautiful, how can she appreciate what she has? So I'm going to push back a little bit. Please. I'm going to push back for two reasons. Number one, I'm not built like (laughs) my mom. My mom is like, Coke bottle super frame, right? My sister Lauren got her frame. I got bean pole frame, like okay. slim bean, right? Nickname slim bean, right? <laughs> Coke bottle versus slim bean. Now, I'm not going to lie. Probably, I don't know how many years ago it was now, but it was definitely before COVID. It's so probably like eight years, maybe seven years ago. I looked into getting a BBL, right? I literally was like, I want to just have a little more you booty. booty. No. Okay. No, okay. I got to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I went to look and they told me I had to gain 20 to 30 pounds because I really struggled to gain weight. They told me I had to gain 20 to 30 pounds in order for wow. me to get the BBL. Yeah. And then the craziest part, I started doing research, right? 
And when you have fat, there's like really dense fat that's been there for years. Yeah. But if you have new fat, it's very thin and wispy. So you mean to tell me I'm going to spend $20,000 on gaining 20 to 30 pounds. Hopefully it goes where I want it to go to get a BBL for fat that might even stick, might not even stick. Mm. I was like, ah. Well, mama, you keep that Coke bottle frame and I'm going to be slim bean. So now I just do the best with what I've got. And that's where I'm at now. But there was a time where it's like, look, because also I feel like when you have a lifestyle where you've done the best that you can in every way, like I'm in the gym five days a week, I yeah. just will never have that frame. And I will just never have that frame. So it's not because I need want the attention from a man or because I don't feel like I'm beautiful. It's like, no, I want to fill out my clothes a little bit different. It's not always about, I do. I want to fill out my clothes a little bit different. Sometimes they'll be looking at me like, dang, if I had just a little more junk in the trunk, uh, it'd be great. But that's just not my reality. I couldn't do it. Yeah, I mean, sir, but, but you are beautiful. I, I'm not saying I'm not beautiful. I know, but- a lot of the times, that's the mindset that a lot of the women actually have. But like, sometimes they just want to fit in their clothes different. That's what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is that still doesn't affect, like, that doesn't negate the fact that that could be very confusing to a young child. And again, you got to think of my psyche. When I'm looking at a woman, too, that's why it's concerning to me mm -hmm. to look at a woman that has done so much work to herself. Because one, I don't even see what's, what's passing out of my baby. Like, what are the genetics what for? Okay, is the ge what am I giving to my child? All right, what, what what are we doing here? Facts, and I, I, that's that's the thing with me. That's why I like a beautiful woman. Even when I think about a beautiful woman, I think about man, we have some beautiful kids together. I guess facts. That's just one of the first things that comes to my mind. This is anthropology, though, because actually, beauty is a sign of health in science. Mm -hmm. Because symmetry is what determines whether you're health. Hey, symmetry is what determines whether you're beautiful or not. But in theory, and scientifically speaking, when you're, you know, you're, this nostril is the same as this nostril is the same as the distance from your lip to your nose. The yeah. All of it is symmetry, yeah. right? And that's what determines whether someone is beautiful. And then also, you know, it's it's been said that the more beautiful you are, it's health. And because men are looking at women, which is probably why they're more physical on an anthropo anthropological way. They're looking at, will my children be healthy? Yeah. And the same way how women are looking to their men, like, can you keep me safe and secure? Because we're looking for provision and not, I hate when people are like, oh, she's just looking for the money. No, no. Actually, I think it's arrogant and, and silly of someone to think that money is enough because it's not. It's the spiritual, emotional, mental, um, energetic, financial, and what physical, whatever the, the, third, the, the sixth one is, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different ways to be in provision over your woman. 100%. Which is why we don't necessarily care what somebody looks like. Women. No, yeah, that's... You think that's not true? It's mostly true. We don't care, I don't think. It's mostly true. I really it's don't think we, we We got a pretty superficial world. Nah, not for women. If you find a man that is treating you good, that loves you right, that is providing for you, that makes you feel heard, safe, seen. Yes, you better. And he's just unattractive. A woman is going to choose that man. I would hope so. Why do you say that? You feel like they don't? I mean, do you feel like they do? I do. I didn't say you. I have. We said they, not you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't say, we didn't say you. Bubble. I don't know. <laughs> So you, so you, so your man doesn't necessarily need to be attractive for you to. I can respect that. Though. You should ask my sister. I wish Lauren was here right now. Lauren, shout out to you. What she says about most of my exes. What she say about them? Wow. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, guys. Let's, we gonna go That's her some, opinion. Oh, this is photos. Beauty sure. is in the eye of the beholder. Oh. <laughs> they were beautiful to me, but you know what it is? I'm never like I have never started dating based off attraction. Every single relationship I've ever been in, that person has grown on me. And people that I'm okay. instantaneously attracted to, I avoid like the plague. Mm. I don't trust them. I don't trust me. That's what it is. Oh, that's that's a little extreme. Is it? Why? Because you don't trust you. I don't trust me and I don't trust them. I don't trust What's happening, it's a scientific thing that happens that's not the truth. So now I start ignoring. But that's just chemistry, right? Yeah, and chemistry can make sugar or it can make bombs. It can. That's 100%. So you just got to have the discernment to know what's a sugar and what's a bomb. Yeah, just stay away. 
I, I, I'll find my little sugar over here <laughs> on this <laughs> side of the spectrum. I mean, now I'm better now. Now I'm like, we can have it all. But in the past, that was not what I wanted. I was like, I actually would say it. There's a certain number that I'm not going to say out loud because it sounds really superficial and terrible. What is it? I don't know what's <laughs> the number you couldn't be above. The, I couldn't date you if you were above this number because people above this what number. Is it six? <laughs> seven. It was a seven. Wow. Because most men above a seven have some kind of entitlement or like, and this is stuff I had to, I've worked through that since now. Definitely, I've worked way through that. I've worked through that. Okay. I've worked through that. But um, before, in my past experience, it was very much. You know, I, I mean, I can understand that because I, I feel the same way about, you know, on the on the spectrum of women as well. I've, in my experience, I've noticed that women who are on the, like, I'm talking about the far end beautiful. spectrum of, ex- like, beautiful, beautiful. What happens is that is the value. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like, wait, wait, what you want me to do? Let me, wait, for affirm- you like affirmations? No. <laughs> my beauty. This is what you get. So like I'm on your arm. I'm on your arm. Period. This is what you get. So but you do get a lot this. from having beauty on your arm. Yeah, but it's not worth it. It's, it's, it's you don't not. get enough to keep it long for the rest of your life. No. Nah, it's, it's it, it, it it won't work. No. It won't work. It can't work. You said seven though. I'm really shocked that. Why is that shocking? Wow. Past experience. What, but like uh, until it was, it was what, what am I? What, what do you what do you rate me? I'm not rating you. <laughs> <laughs> You're very handsome. Just, <laughs> You're very handsome. You have a great matter of fact. I don't even want to be able to date you because if I, that means I'm at least a seven or below. If I can no date no you. <laughs> now 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 that's not my experience. I don't. I wouldn't know. Oh, you bumped it up. Oh, I've definitely bumped it up. Okay. Now I believe we can have it all. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> No, you don't think? I mean, everything's at a cost. So you, you can Everything have is at, you a want cost. at a cost. What do you think the cost is to it have it all? depends on what we're talking about. To have it all. That, first of all, that's way too big of a question. We got to find somewhere to start here. Because I think it's different for men and women as well. So hit it with the men's side. For a man to have it all, mm-hmm. you can't. So the reality of it is we have a you limit. You cannot? No. We have 24 hours in a day. So already we've been limited in the time that we're able to have. We don't have infinite time. So by the definition of that, we can't have it all. Because if I want to build an incredible career, I can't spend my life all day with my mom and my kids. Mm. So I already have to go about choosing that this is what right now is what's important to me. Mm. So even just by the fact that time is finite, that just proves to us that we can't have it all. Everything is about what do I want more at what that what's most important to me mm. based upon my values mm. and I build my life off that. Now, as it relates to your partner, mm-hmm. it still is not I want to have it all. I want I, I'm going to have it all. If I get this very rich guy, mm-hmm. it's a price to pay for this very rich guy. Is it? Absolutely. We've what, talked about this already. What is the price that you're referring to? How hard is this man working? Hard. You won't get as much time for sure. Is time important to you? For me? Yes. Personally? Yeah. No. Well, you are you are unique because most ladies, that's probably going to be Up in there. the top. Quality time. No. 100%. Quality time is a love language of mine, but not in the sense where I need a lot of your time, but I need you to be present when we're together. So how you said earlier, if it's like we're we're on a date and we're having a conversation and we're having dinner and I'm like, so in your eyes, I can see it. Like... I, and I do, this is with friends and romantic. Yes. When you go away, it's like, I literally will say like, where did you go? I know. Where uh, did you go? I know. You know, or, or, or what, what, and I do that with my friends too. If I'm having a conversation and then my friends get on their phones, I'm, I'll be like, oh, I'll wait. I know. I'll wait. I'll wait for you to be done because it's important for me, for, for both of us to be present with one another. And if that means that our conversation is over, then it's over. So I don't expect to be with you all the time. And also I have so many things going on. People really sometimes will be like, oh, you don't love me anymore. I'm like, no, I I do. I just, I I have 10,000 things happening. So I personally don't need a lot of time. Now, mind you, when I fall off the face of the earth yeah. and I'm raising these kids and I'm present with my husband and we're, we're traveling and we're doing all like, well, I, will I probably want more time then? Yes. But we'll be older and wiser and all the things. I, I like the time that I'm given. If I get the time, I will absolutely take it. But if there's not as much time, I, I could fill my schedule. 
So based upon how you set up, mm-hmm. then, you know, the rich man with not much time to give, mm-hmm. you could. You can have it all. But a lot of women might get that hand mm-hmm. that they may have wanted their whole lives mm-hmm. and be absolutely depressed. Uh, this is true. Situation. This and is very they true. might have thought that that was having it all. Because people think that money is having it all. But money is not having it all. Money is just a fraction of the pie. Like for me, I say true success is when you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, and energetically are happy with the way that things are. Mm. And if any one of those things are missing, is you're missing something, a, a big something. So I think that, you know, driving the car is like, I'm just as happy in a Rolls Royce as I am in a Prius, you know, as I am on the bus. You know, I I feel like it's really important for us, which goes back to knowing who we are, owning who we are, being in that transformative space. The things that we have don't define us. They're nice to have, but they shouldn't define who you are. And the second that you start to realize that people need the things that validate who they are, that's a scary person to be around. That's when you need an exit stage left immediately. You know, so I think that, I think that What's most important is for you to do the work, like you're saying from the beginning, yep. on what is it that you need, who is it that you want to be, and pick your partner accordingly. So to that, I do not think we can have it all. <laughs> I do think I we can have what we need. Okay. I even think you, we can have most what we of want, what we want. But I don't think we can have it all. I hate that. I know. I know. I think that's that's a part of life is kind of you know figuring that out but the problem but the thing about it you don't need it you don't you don't need it all that's the thing you don't need it all like you just if you get what you need mm. what do you you need love mm-hmm. right you need to be cared for that you need like when we think about that as long as you get that you're good what do you think most men need in relationships from women oh man when i think of a woman I think of almost, I hate to say like the motor of the man. It's so, you know, if women just knew their power, it's actually so easy because it's like having a man is like having like a racehorse Mm. and you get to send this horse on the track. He gets, he goes out there, he works, he sweats, he busts his ass. Yeah. You just got to cut. He going to come back to you. He going to be tired. He yeah. might have a little wounds on him. Mm-hmm. You just rub them wounds down. Mm-hmm. You tell that horse that he's the most amazing horse in the world. Mm-hmm. You tell him that even if he came in last place, you about to come in first place this next race. <laughs> you better just work nice and hard to go about doing it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, that horse going to feel like a champion. Yeah. And go back out there and one, run the next race better than he ran the last race. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially what we need from our women. Yes. We need our women to be able to build us up in that way, like those intangible things, Mm -hmm. to be able to empower us, Mm -hmm. to encourage us, Mm -hmm. to affirm us, Mm -hmm. and also to be able to hear what the man is not saying. Oh, I say this all the time. Because most men are not going to directly, directly communicate and express themselves. Yeah, we're starting to evolve a bit. And, you know, men now, uh, the, the the newer generation of men are getting a little bit better at communication. But this, this is new. Yes. Men just started talking like 10 years ago. Yeah. Right? So the thing about it is don't expect your man to just be expressing all his emotions. But you really got to be in tune with him enough to hear and understand where he is. Yes. To know what he needs and to just be able to feel that need. Because there's nothing like a woman who just comes up to you and encourages you in a way that you had not told her you were struggling in, but she just felt it. Because she can see it. Mm. You know, my mom, I've said this on an episode before, like my mom has always said, like, you should be able to to see what that man needs before he expresses it. And so she always said, try to find five different ways that you can add him value. And the part that I didn't say in that video is you when when you are valuable to someone, like there's a yeah. difference between someone that just wants you. There's a difference between positioning yourself where someone almost needs you. You're you're solidifying your spot in that life because you bring value, he brings value, you bring value. So it's an ever going thing. It's not like anyone is winning more than the other person. It's just very much like, okay, 
this is me making sure that my man has value. My man's going to make sure that I have value. And then you're solidifying that yin and yang cyclical forever thing that's going to happen, right? Yep. And so I do, I think that's such a feminine essence when you can see the need without that man expressing it. Because Absolutely. the thing about masculinity is it doesn't ask for help. Masculine energy, that's a that's more of a feminine trait. It is. And so women are out here saying, like, oh, I want a masculine man, I want a masculine man, but I need to, I need to, why isn't he opening his mouth? He needs to tell me what he needs. Well, boo, you asked for a masculine man. Masculine energy doesn't do that. Masculine energy tries to figure it out, solves problems, keep it going, keep the roof over your head. So our job of work for them, I believe, as far as being a woman in her feminine, is to see that need, which can be challenging. It's like reading minds, to be honest. It's really yes. not that hard once you get the hang of it. You just you, you just observe. Learn your person and observe. Yes. And with that, it goes back to your other point. That's why and I, said, I know I struggle with this, but I'm like, non. It's kind of I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> we if all she's are. not present. Yeah. That's a big issue because oh. that's like, that's the power. The power is in that presence. Yes. Because that's where you her intuitive power comes from. Yes. Is her being in that moment? Yes. Is her feeling you? Mm-hmm. Observing you? Mm-hmm. Understanding the patterns of you? The patterns. <laughs> and being able to say, nah, this ain't right. Like you should not be able to walk around that damn house unhappy and your your lady not know. Right? Yeah. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Yes. So you 100 percent right. A good picture of masculinity. We talked about this on one of my previous episodes. One of um I guess it's a man who is 30 bags in the trunk. Y'all just went grocery shopping and his ass put all 30 of them bags on every single arm. Oh. And he is struggling to walk inside the damn house. And he, you say, babe, can I help? He's like, oh, I'm good. And he's struggling. And then guess what he does? One of the bags pop, Dang. the milk drops and breaks on the floor. Dang. Right then and there. Now see, the thing about it is that is, but that's masculinity played out. That's that's like masculine ego, everything yep. perfectly played out, right? Yeah, in absolutely. And you have to even women, you have to even understand the good and the bad that comes with that. Because if your man is making mistakes because he's trying to put it all on his back for you, mm-hmm. even that's beautiful. Because you can easily make the mistake in that situation and be like, "See, you so dumb. I told you I could have helped you." Yeah, no. Or you could be like, "Hey." I got you. You're right. You know I'm right here. Yeah, you, listen. Let me help. We could. We could. Matter of fact, great. Give me one of them damn bags. Right. Just, just hand me the light. Just hand me the bread. And it's how you <laughs> say it. It's how you say it. It's Absolutely. how you say it. I read this. It wasn't a book. Actually, it was a recording online called How to Have the Relationship You Want by Rory Ray. Now, when okay. I first started dating, you know, one percenters, whatever you want to call it, M- masculine, successful men. Don't do it. Don't, don't. I do value it. man. <laughs> I'm not even trying to play around with no, it. No, no, we ain't even one get, Whatever. <laughs> but I, I learned that, like, even though I look feminine, I had much more masculine energy than I had thought, right? And I didn't know. And Wait, when you figured this out? Oh, this is probably like nine ish years ago. Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe a little more. Wow. That's a, that's a, that's some, you know, shit to Bro. find out. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think that people understand that fem- masculinity is natural when you're in the world doing it on your own. Yeah. As absolutely. a, as a, if I'm a single woman and I'm out here achieving and building businesses and, um, you know, doing all the things I'm in my masculine yeah. and I may think that I'm as soft as pie when I'm with my man, but if it's like, he's had someone that's m- far more feminine than me, then I had to learn. And so for me, that looked like following a lead better. Mm. I wasn't really clear. Now I'm like, I want to recklessly trust my man. But back then I was like, oh, I'm scared to recklessly trust anybody mm. more than myself because mm. I got a good thing going. I, I've never really let me all the way down. Like I've tripped, fall, fell, all the things, but all the way down, you know, heartbreak uh, doesn't sound good. So I read this book and Rory Ray said, feminine energy the key, the the key is you say how you feel instead of telling someone wronging that person and then you say what you don't want and you say what you do want and i have incorporated this into my life so as an example okay. let's say something let's do something you know 
like silly or small. You're mm-hmm. supposed to take out the trash, right? Let's say we go together. Right. You're supposed to take out the trash. I've, you, we've talked about it 13 times before, and the trash is starting to st- like go over. The house is starting to smell. Okay. I'm really tired of this trash. Now, in a lot of relationships in this day and age, the woman would say, I'm so sick and tired of you not taking out this trash. We've had this conversation. You need to take the trash out. The house thinks you're not smell the, the, the smell of trash in the house. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes a thing. And then the man's like, whoa, blue. And then he's in his ego. She's in her ego. Nothing is beneficial. Whereas if I have a conversation with you and I say, um, you know, Tyshawn, we've had a conversation about us taking out the trash. Actually, first you got to say, may I share something with you? Let's role play. Okay, let's do it. May I share something with you? Uh, absolutely. Is it a good time? Because I don't want to distract you from what you have going on. No, it's okay. That's I just need a couple minutes anyway. That's fine. Okay. So I, um, I've i noticed that the house is kind of starting to smell because of the trash being done. And we did talk about the roles that we were going to take in the house. And we decided that you were going to take out the trash and I was going to do X, Y, Z. Is that going to change because the trash has kind of been smelling for a little while and I don't want to smell the trash anymore? Do we want to change the roles or do are you okay with keeping that as your role in the house. We don't have to change anything. That's fine. We, we can do that. Are you sure? You sure? Oh, that, <laughs> that, that at the end was nice. It was, it was a little condescending at one point. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I don't want to smell the trash. And we, we didn't really need that part. Okay, okay. No, but I'm, no that was good though. Yes. No, overall, I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicking. But, but, that, but that if, if, if we can have exchanges like that, mm-hmm the world be a better place and this is the thing because we're not nagging at each other yes and this is the thing it's the tone oh absolutely my whole tone changed yes and women y'all look kenny is this thing on we can hear me okay ladies you be like i don't want to have to change my tone and do the this and and make the sandwich and look then don't get a masculine man get something different we have to learn how to with your girls with your friends with your family you could be as you know, aggressive as you want to be, but with masculine energy, if I were to be like, Negro, you need to take out the trash. Mm. I'm so sick and tired of this trash and the house smelling all. No, that's not conducive. And another thing that I would highly suggest is adding in physical touch. Oh my God. If you come and like grab the arm, sorry, 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 girlfriend, or can I touch your arm? You're, you're this fine. is okay. You're fine. So if you come in and you do a, and you do a cute little like, oh, hey, baby, can I talk to you about something really quick? Automatically, he's disarmed. Disarmed. Automatically. The only reason why I didn't touch you in the first place is because I didn't ask you. But realistically speaking, that's my method. Yeah. And it works. So it's like people be like, oh, that's manipulative or that, okay. It's not. What's Manipulate the word? Manipulate me. It's it's um <laughs> contravance. It's contravance. Thank you. Shout out to my friend. I did a, a, a live YouTube because we were talking about manipulation. And he said, well, contravance is the same as manipulation, but with the positive connotation. Okay. I was like, thank you for Google. It just put me onto a new word. Influence, but that sounds contravance means that you're inspired to want to do a certain thing. Mm. So I'm going to to strategically be mindful that I'm dealing with a masculine man in his ego. And do the things that I know that he likes, which is physical touch, which is the cooing sound, which is the the soft voice, not, Man. you know? You got the chorus dropping on this? <laughs> I need to start a chorus. I'm, Everybody keeps saying that. I'm going to be honest because that is, I don't know, and, and, and it's, it's actually very logical because if you think about it, even as men, another man, if they approach us with rah-rah, we rah-rah back, mm-hmm. right? Like we... That's what we do. Yes. So if you approach me with the rah rah, I'm naturally gonna wanna rah rah right back. That's yeah. just that's the masculine going at it. It's Period. a tussle. Yes. At this point, power struggle. It's a power struggle. Whereas the energy, when like it is so easy to disarm a man. <sighs> like we are like men are just actually so easy. Yes. To deal with. Yes. Especially as a woman. Less than like women are have always been our number one weaknesses since the beginning of time. Facts. <laughs> but ladies just really are not in tune with the superpower as much as they have, um, or as much as they could or should be. But a woman that really understands those things and she knows how to employ that. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful when it happens in a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's very, very beautiful. And also, I do have to say for my men out there that a lot of men also aren't prepared for that level of just very real, authentic, transparent conversation. 
Like some men may still get offended, even if you are doing the voice and doing it, which says that that person is not healed yeah. and that you probably need to be with someone else. But if you can't have a normal conversation with someone about the decisions that y'all made together, and I feel like I do want, I don't want, then you're with the wrong person anyway, in my, in, in, in my opinion. 100%. If, if a man ain't, if you give that approach yeah, and it still don't work. Yeah. Now, nothing's going to work for him. Yeah. He, he just don't work. Yeah. Yes. So that's just really what it is. Mm-hmm. It ain't even a you problem at that point. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the reality of it is a lot of us are in the space in the world of dating and we're in that place where we, we, we're broken mm-hmm. and we don't work mm-hmm. and we're trying to figure out how to work with other people. And that's a very big issue. I even being, you know, I'm, I'm newly in a place. So my transformation. I'm moving from what I like to call it like my warrior phase now to the king phase of my life where the warrior phase was about conquest. Mm -hmm. It was about exploration. Mm -hmm. It was about adventure. Mm -hmm. It was about domination where the king phase is about partnership. Mm. It's about expansion. Mm. You know, it's growth. And knowing those different phases that a man has in his natural progressive cycles the warrior face can be very destructive, especially when he's dating. Mm-hmm. Because, to the woman. Oh, to the to every woman. Mm-hmm. Because now it's just about conquering her. Mm-hmm. I'm just feeding on women. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm having her to put the deer head on the wall and to be able to say that that's what I've done. Mm-hmm. And it cheers it up with my boys. Mm-hmm. But personally, I even noticed at that point, it was a point where I got a lot less satisfied in those same situations that I would love. Mm. The same situations, because when you live in that life, you love it. It energizes you, it excites you. The thrill just runs through you, it motivates you. You think about the next time, you're excited about it. But then all of a sudden you might be in it and it just doesn't feel as exciting. In fact, you start going so left. Let me tell you what I was, let me tell you how crazy this started getting. I would be with a woman who is a, look, <laughs> We know what's about to go down. <laughs> yep. And instead of me just capitalizing on the situation, I'm over here breaking this woman down, telling her all the things she's dealing with, how she need to be improving her. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I'm even thinking to myself, like, bro, this is not the script. <laughs> like, this is not the conversation we have right now. Right. But my mind, I started really seeing the world very much so differently. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, again, having talk about that transformation and evolving yeah. into that next person and that not on that person who's not broken and actually can work and be in harmony with somebody else mm-hmm. a lot of us just have not ascended to that person and that's okay just know where you at yes and own it no and own it and be honest about it because i think one of the hard parts about the warrior stage is a lot of men will lie like they're not in the warrior stage oh yeah they'll be like be no. fake king oh fake king all day <laughs> how do you how do you how do you sort through fake king versus warrior what could you tell the ladies you know a man is in the king phase by a how he spends his time mm. and b what he values and that's the tricky part because you have to uncover what somebody values mm. and somebody can f- have fake values in front of you as well ooh so that's the thing values have to be exposed that's why ladies I'm I'm sorry you busting it down on the first night you don't know who you just had sex with because it's very easy to be whoever I want to be the day I meet you. Very easy. So the thing about it is you talk about figuring out if a man is a king. If a man is a king, he will value this level of he will have he's already adopted and has a vision mm. now for what's about to happen for his life. How a woman might be a part of his life. Mm. What the future of his life might look like with children, with fam like there's this mindset has come where he's taking these things on. He's now open to the responsibility of mm. the king. That's another thing. The warrior really doesn't want certain responsibilities that the king has. Because they weigh him down from the conquest. 
it the take, overall conquest. It 100% weighs you down. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing about it. The king is, he is excited about the responsibility. Mm-hmm. And if and if not excited, at the very least, he understands and accepts the responsibility yes. that comes with that next level. Yes. And that's the thing. You are here, you know, smashing it. First of all, a lot of women ain't even smashing Dash and Warriors. They smashing little jokers. <gasps> Yikes. So the thing about it is now when a child gets involved, mm. that responsibility, whoa, whoa. Mm. He lives a life of relinquishing responsibility. Ooh. His lifestyle is about adventure yes. and thrill and fun mm-hmm. and freedom. Mm-hmm. That's a warrior. Mm. So you really got to know and analyze what people are and where they are before you start making long-term decisions with people who have short-term values. Ooh. I got to let that land. Long-term decisions with people that have short-term values. That is so good. And it's so true. And I think that we as women get to be very clear that the king category, there's far less people in that pool. Oh, yeah. So your dating pool gets smaller. And I know that a lot of women, well, really, I feel like right now, just in America, really, it's like an epidemic of singleness, right? And it's like, it's for women, it's like this thing like, oh, I hate being single. Okay, great. So inside of that, I feel like women think that there's something wrong with them and that they have to choose from the warrior or the joker Mm. category when what they really want is a king, but there aren't enough kings to go around. Mm. What do you think the solution to that is? You know... I don't have a solution. (laughs) I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. The only thing that you can do Uh is to control what you can control. Which is yourself. And I just recommend that you are constantly working on yourself. Mm. So for at any moment, if what you want was to present itself... You are ready. Mm. Because I hate to say it, it's not so much the issue is that women are not meeting enough kings. Uh, women have met kings, but were you ready for the king when you met him? Right? The likelihood that you're going to be ready, you will meet a man at some point in your life mm-hmm. that is at the point where he's ready to lead, to head a family, to set the sail. I, would, I, I, I think it's very unlikely to say a woman would never meet a man like that. The question is, are you going to be ready for that when it presents itself? What does ready mean? Ready means... Healed. Right, and it's that's such a good question, right? What is ready? What is healed? Because mm-hmm. it's such a spectrum. Such a spectrum. But if you literally are so damaged to the point where you can't have a fundamentally healthy relationship to have connection Mm -hmm. to have communication Mm -hmm. to manage conflict just the just the basic (laughs) things that come right with a relationship right you're not ready but the reality of it is and i remember you know dr jamal bryant said this he was so beautiful because we're not looking for i don't think we need it we're not looking for perfection Mm. when it comes to readiness Because he gave a good example. When you purchase a house, you're not a plumber, but you'll deal with all the issues that come with it when it happens. You're not a carpenter, but if some things got to get done in the house, you'll accept that responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're not a a lawn care expert, Mm -hmm. but you're going to figure out how to make sure that it's maintenance. And you're not a parent yet, but when it comes, you learn. But you learn. It's more of the commitment. Mm -hmm that is mostly important is truly being committed to just deal with whatever the hell comes with this decision I'm making Yes, is what mostly has to do with the readiness. And the guys that I know who are quote unquote, not ready, that's the biggest thing that they're struggling with. It's, it's, it's mostly commitment because if I could snap my fingers and make this brother a hundred percent committed to whatever came with it, he would be committed to heal. He would be committed to uh, uh, take whatever classes, whatever study, whatever it had to do to make that work. He would be committed to to figure it out. Mm-hmm. 
So it's really all commitment that has to do with your readiness mm. to deal with a relationship because mm. you're never going to be 100% ready for all never. the aspects of it. Mm-mm. And I think relationships, especially marriage, I think it shows you the ugliest parts of you because it's a mirror to all the things that you thought you had under control or all the things like when you're learning to deal and juggle with another person, which in turn is really beautiful because now you have an opportunity to expand, grow and evolve in an area you didn't know before. Yes. You know, and I think that's ultimately, like you said, it's the thing, like, are you willing to evolve? Are you willing to grow? Are you willing to change? Are you Mm. willing to do the things? And also I have to say this ladies, and I'm sorry to say this. Mm -mm. It's not about a number on the scale. It's not about how beautiful you are, but it is about doing the best with what you're given because there is something that I believe, and you could tell me what you think for men, where they think that dependent on how you take care of yourself, that's how you'll take care of the children. Dependent on how you take care of yourself, that's how you'll take care of me, you know? And I think that that's one of the things that either subconsciously or consciously men are attracted to because that level of self-care, it overflows into other things. That's what does the house look like? You know, do you make the bed in the morning? I have this conversation with my team all the time where it's like, look, making your bed in the morning is the, is the first accomplishment in your day. Check, check something off. Be proud of yourself, you know? And, and it's funny to me when you, when you hear men be like, yeah, and she's got to make the bed. She would be making the bed anyway. Shouldn't she be making the bed anyway? I, I'm, I'm, can, when people have my, and I, I got Aunt Marge. If you ever see this episode, I'm so grateful. I lived with my Aunt Marge for three years in California. And inside of that, um, my Aunt Marge used to say, she helped me get my life together. She's like my mom away from home because I moved mm. to America by myself when I was 20. And it wasn't until I was like 20, probably three, that I moved in with her 23 to 26 ish. Okay. And, um, I was a whirlwind. I mean, I was a, I was just, I never made my bed. I never this. And I remember my aunt came and she sat me down and she said, Sarah, a man will never love you if you don't make your bed. Wow. Now I was like, I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't need to find out if this woman who was married, she's widowed now, um, has two beautiful children, has all of her stuff together, knows who she is, is empowered, all the things. If she can sit with me and tell me that, why would I not just, it takes two minutes, probably takes four. I have a lot of pillows, you know, like literally though, I don't, I don't understand. So why not get the first accomplishment in the day? And if you're in a partnership, I believe that the last person out of the bed should make the bed. That's fair. I hate that rule, but that's fair. I think it's fair. It's very fair. Honestly, let me tell you, when I was there, well, yeah, dating women, (laughs) watching um, how a woman treats the bed when she gets about that joint, I would always use that as the test. Really? That was absolutely a barometer. I would just think it's the trashiest thing ever if a woman would just leave my bed after spending the night and not spreading it. That would be wait, wait. So oh she didn't goodness. wait. Like, did you get out of the bed first? Yes. Oh, I'm typically always out of the bed first. Oh, I'll, you know, that'll do it. I, I you, uh, my girls know. I put the spray like when you. It's like laying in a cloud when you lay into the. It's literally like it smells good. I just think that's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a. It, you spend more time in your bed than in, and don't do it for a man, ladies. Do it for yourself. Like I do this for my <laughs> bed, and he gets the benefit. I'm telling you because it's literally like when you see it, it's pretty. When you lay on it, it's like a cloud, and then you touch the sheets. It's like, oh, this smells so good. What is this? You know, and there's nothing better than clean sheets. Nothing. What is better than it? I mean, there's a few things, but like it's up there. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's up I'm there. Be, I mean, yes, yeah, ladies, that's that's game right there. Because any woman that left that bed and did not spread it, I already knew. You were done. Well, I mean, done as in couldn't be your that's partner. That's the thing. One hundred percent. That's the thing. You men, we are always understanding. We just because you're not gonna be wife, don't mean we're gonna cut you off. Oh. You will be dealt with, a woman will be having a relationship with a man for years, but you're just not wife to him. Oh, God. But it's certain things we see in you to make that assumption. Your dress, your speech, your diet, your habits, your conversation, your friend groups, all of these things have us determine whether or not we see you being the mother of our child and the queen to the throne. So all of those things come into it, but yeah, I, I would say, yeah, the, the bed is. It's big. And it's not even, and for somebody who thinks that that's petty, 
it's more what spreading the bed symbolizes. And I'm from, I don't know, I'm on the festival up north. We say spreading the bed. I, I mean, I've, I've heard of a bedspread, which is the blanket. Yes, it's probably a little ghetto, but that's what we say. When you said, get out the bed and she spreads it, I, my mind went somewhere completely <laughs> different. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh. It's I didn't even think of that. Oh, that. But See, then you, you, you switched it up. Now we know the vice. But anyway. Ah! <laughs> it's what it symbolizes. Because it symbolizes she's nurturing. Ah. She's oh. supporting me. She's holding it down. Mm. She's handling. She can handle. Like, th- think about what that is. Like, I walk into a room and something is already done mm. for me, mm-hmm. prepared. Mm-hmm. It's the very same thing a man feels like when he comes in and he's hungry. He just opens the door and a meal is ready. Mm. But think about what that is. That's being thoughtful. Yes. You have something prepared for me that I didn't have prepared for myself. Mm-hmm. You're, you're. That's is literally. It symbolizes support, mm-hmm. essentially, which is what's most important to us. It kind of goes back to the, you know, we talked how we started the conversation. Mm-hmm. So you feel like support is the most important thing? Absolutely. For a man? Absolutely. After physicality? Yeah. <laughs> you threw that in there. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And, you know, because support, I'm just wrapping it up. It is that intangible. It is. It's that intangible thing that a woman does. Support, we can or summon the affirmation, the empowerment, the encouragement, all of that. Mm. That's the support. And when I see you make my bed, I see you having that in you. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay, so I have this hardly in love card game over here. Oh, man. Best card game in the world. This is, I've played this game. Really? Yes. Okay. I played it at hardly initiated. Oh, yes. I remember. I want to ask three questions to you. Three questions? Because I feel like we're talking a lot about relationships and we're talking about love. And I know some of these might be spicy. I know. I'm like, which one are you going to ask? Oh, I don't know. It's going to be one of these. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. I'm definitely asking this question. Okay. um. (laughs) Okay. If your sex game was a dish, what would it be and why? Wow. <laughs> this is went this is a whole nother show right now. Mm-hmm. If my sex game was a dish, mm-hmm. what would it be and why? Oh man. I think I would have to say. Hmm. Steak and eggs. <laughs> <laughs> that was so visual for me T-bone in that moment. Steak and eggs. Okay. Hearty. It's going to be nice. Filling. Hearty, filling, satisfying. Healthy. Not healthy? I wasn't thinking healthy. No. Okay. Yeah. The first couple adjectives was right on. Okay, okay. The first couple adjectives, it wasn't. Yeah. Savory. Savory. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I got more. I can come with the adjectives. There we go. I read books or whatever, you know. Okay, that's T-bone good. Steak and eggs. That's a good answer. Yeah. So these are questions that you can ask your potential partners, your now partners, or your husband, and it just spices things up. I feel like these are great questions. See, that's the thing. It's like, it's going, man, it's, it's so many questions in that deck, literally a hundred open-ended questions Yes. for you to be able to go into avenues of conversations that many of us don't go into. We're, we're creatures of habit. We typically ask the same questions. We're not very creative. So sometimes we need a little inspiration. I ask some crazy questions. When I'm like getting serious about a person, I want to know. I do. I, I, I do. Okay, this one is fun. This one's cute because I feel like then it opens up like your genre of music. The okay. question is, okay. if you were to create a sexy bedroom playlist, what songs would you include? Give me top three. Honestly, man, I would just play Usher's entire Confessions album. Dang. Just the whole thing, start to finish. That's it. But that's sad. No, it just depends. It's no, no. Confessions is sad. I mean, you got a superstar. That one. Handle it. Okay. I mean, no, no, no. You tripping. Like that, that dun, uh, that's like dun, one of the dun, greatest dun, R&B. Honestly, dun, that is the greatest R&B album ever dun, created. Dun. Okay. Yeah, so like, I would I w- I w- rock that from, even the sad songs are sexy. 
I mean, they're sexy. Let it burn. Is that that? No. That's no. That is that. Burn is on there. Yeah. Burn is on there. I think that you should uh-huh. let it burn. Yeah, all of that. Okay. I'm 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 marking up start to finish. Okay, okay. Here's another one. What? Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a good question. You're in the spicy part of the day. I, well, now I'm on the non-spicy. Okay, okay. What we got? Beyond the physical, what kind of emotional and sensual connection are you looking for in a partner? Ask me that one more time. Make sure I got it right. Beyond the physical, okay. what kind of emotional and sensual connection are you looking for in a partner? Oh, man. Emotional and sensual mm. connection. You know, I really crave the relationship that's easy. And when I say easy, I don't mean we don't have conflict or we don't have issues. But we have a chemistry mm-hmm. that allows us to literally just flow and enjoy one another. Because me, I really, the thing about me is I have to be sparked too, in like mentally. I have to be mentally stimulated in my conversation mm-hmm. with you, in my energy with you. So that is the beginning of the sensuality Mm. for me. Mm -hmm. So having a woman that we have that chemistry, we have that spark, we have that conversation, that is literally the beginning. That's the genesis of everything else happening. Mm. And as long as we can have that, you somebody I can look forward to in conversation. Mm. I can look forward to come back and tell you my good news. Mm. I can look forward to coming back telling you my bad news. I can look forward to coming back and telling you this joke. These conver- as long as that is alive, the sex life is going to be incredible. Period. The I'm the every everything else is going to thrive mm-hmm. as long as as I have that part. Mm-hmm. So I think that I hope that answers the question. I think that's great. Mental stimulation. Let me ask you one. Oh, one of these. Okay. Yeah, come on. I ripped my my package. This is a great <laughs> get, this is a great game, guys. Hardly in love, okay? All right. So we yeah, I, and I'm gonna ask a good one now. You don't feel like you. mine were good? No, no, no. I feel like yours were great. Mine were great. I just feel like this is a breakfast for me. Oh yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay. How do you? Define intimacy. Close connection. That's how I define intimacy. And that could Mm. be physically, that could be emotionally, that could be mentally, Mm. that could be spiritually, that could be obviously physically. That's the easiest part of intimacy. But I feel like true intimacy is when I'm in close connection with someone and I'm there and I'm in every moment and they're in every moment. That's the most intimate thing about intimacy for me mm, okay touche so what, what i'm gonna do to bless the family oh shout out to all the amazing audience members and listeners of this platform <laughs> we actually gonna go ahead and give three people oh. an absolutely free hardly in love deck a hundred open-ended questions to inspire incredible conversations yes. i'm gonna be honest date night and even game night you can do it in a group yes. it's fun great time all you got to do in the description give us your email and if we're gonna look we're gonna randomly select three people and we're gonna send y'all a free deck let's go hardly in love i love it absolutely so we're absolutely in love that's what we doing <laughs> we do it absolutely in love absolutely in love I like period that. all caps I like okay that. so we have to shift gears. We have a part of the show that's called It's Giving versus It's Giving. Okay. So this is where I give you a scenario, and then I'm going to give you It's Giving Something Positive versus It's Giving Something Negative, mm. and you have to tell me which one you would choose and why. Okay. You set up for this one. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. It's going to be ready. a good one. All right. Here we go. First question. You have started dating someone. She's new. And you're really vibing with her. You guys have great conversations. The mental stimulation is there. And then you ask her to make you a sandwich. And she says, I'm not your wife. If you want me to do wife duties, then you're going to need to make me your wife. Okay. It's giving, ooh, you're a little spicy, but I like it. Okay. Or it's giving, oh, mm -mm. if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. You just had to say that. (laughs) First of all. (laughs) Both of those options is great. <laughs> Wait, 
The second option, what was the second option? Again? The second option is if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. You just had to say that. Like if you uh, okay. ain't a wife, you ain't a wife. Just uh, say that. Okay, okay. It went, it went too, it went too sister for me. Okay, definitely. Yeah, that's my option. Option B. Option B. You kicking sure. her to the curb. Yeah, I don't like that attitude. Oh. I don't really, you know, the concept of wifely duties is tricky as well. Don't get me wrong. I think it is a way you can overly invest. Mm-hmm. In a man, I think either a man and a woman can overly invest in one other without the other person reciprocating. Yeah. But as long as the reciprocity is there, yeah. let's not worry about all that. Yeah. You know, I feel like I learned in therapy, my therapist, because I, my superpower, I'm a connector. I love to connect. Like I just put, it, this, this is my gift, right? Yeah. And um, I've given a lot of opportunities and a lot of different things because I'm a connector, you know, and I'm definitely a giver. So I'm, I give, but no part of me feels like I need anything back after I gave because yeah. when I gave it, I gave it. And so I asked my therapist because he was like, you're acting like a wife and that is your delusion. You are not the therapist a wife. Said that. My therapist told me, I'm acting like a wife and that is my delusion. You need to act like a girlfriend. And I said, well, what part of me sounds delusional? Like what part of me is acting like a wife versus me being a girlfriend? And my therapist said, shout out to you both. So grateful for you. He said, um, the difference is wife speaks in our language. Girlfriend is still very much yours and mine. So there's okay. no problem with you being a giver, being a lover. If you're not overextending yourself and you're being who you are, you absolutely should do that. If that man is hungry and you know that he's hungry and you go make him a sandwich, you should do that. But the second that you start saying, oh, come over to our house, the second that you start saying, oh, let's drive our car, the second that you start saying, um, you know, our dog prematurely, right? It was your dog and now it's all of a sudden it's our dog. Like, no, that's his dog because y'all aren't married and he had it beforehand. <laughs> That's what that's the difference between a wife and a girlfriend because I dive all the way in. I don't know how to it's hard being a a, a girlfriend in 2024. It's tricky though because don't you want a man saying our before marriage? Marriage? I mean, I I, I, w- I would want to see us moving into I think it should be gradual. Mm-hmm. Right. We don't say our date one. Right. No, never. But I think we should be moving into this team mindset before we actually sign the contract. So does the contract make us say the word our? Or is it the mindset that now I want to now fully take provision over this woman? Because that happens before the ceremony of marriage. I think I think that when you take over, like when you come together as a covenant It's truly, we become one. And when we become one, now it really is our beforehand. It's delusional. Well, the the, the methodology is there. I get what you're saying. Yes. In in terms of, oh, this would make sense for me to say, I should be, it's mine and it's yours. It's not ours. See, I think I understand his messaging. I just think at scale that can't that shouldn't be applied at scale Mm. it shouldn't be applied at scale i do feel like you have to we generally need to improve our discernment and knowing who to invest into period like emotionally spiritually you have to know who to invest into but i can't say it's a good rule for us not to think like a team before we've actually you know sign the documentation Mm -hmm. in marriage. I think the team mindset comes well before. And I honestly think we should see ourselves even operating as a team prior Mm. before so. Because if we can't see that and we don't hear that mindset and we aren't displaying that mindset, I think it's delusion to think that it will come after marriage Mm. because we have no evidence Mm. That this person is even thinking like this. And I think language as a leader is huge. Mm-hmm. Like John Maxwell, I love all of his books. Some mm-hmm. wrote some of the best leadership books. He speaks on that. With your team, it's not, this is what I think we should do. Mm-hmm. Hey, I think, hey, this is what we should do here. Hey, this is what we did last month as mm-hmm. a company. Hey, mm-hmm. th- like you should speak in this way when you really start embracing the fact that. I now, especially if I take responsibility of you, Mm -hmm. you're my woman, Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for you. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is I do start speaking like this. So do you believe in monetarily providing for your woman before you're married? 
One hundred percent. First of all, are guys paying for the dates? Like, like this is the thing. I'm like, talking about paying her rent if you're living separate. I'm talking about. Well, it, see, it's all in reason. Mm-hmm. If the brother's not able to do that, then no. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously, if, yeah. yeah. So, like, that's the thing, and most guys aren't. Mm. So that's just the reality of the situation. Now, the thing about it is I do believe in you monetarily being invested in a person however you can, Mm. right? So if this month you come to me and I see that, babe, that suitcase looking trash, I need to get you, I'm going to go ahead and and do this for you because that shit is just not, that's not going to fly. Yeah. If I see that, you really want to take this trip and you really been talking about it, but you don't really do nothing for yourself. You do. You've probably been neglecting yourself a little bit. I want to come in here and impose myself here to do this for you. Mm. So I think you have to do what you can with what you have. Mm. But to realistically think men around here ready to pay two rents is not realistic. Most men are <laughs> See how they doing with their own damn rent. <laughs> now, that's just Touché. the reality of the situation. But I think that's what you more so should look for. You're not more so looking for a man to pay your rent, mm-hmm. but still look for how a man is thoughtful mm-hmm. around you as a woman. Mm-hmm. Is he gonna if he is he gonna notice that I needed this on camp, babe? I went ahead and took care of this for you. Mm. Is he gonna is is he gonna be putting himself in a position to make sure that he's putting himself on the front line of expenses when it comes to you both Mm -hmm. and not necessarily making sure you at the front line of things being necessarily paid. Like that's just how he moves. Mm -hmm. So you just have to more so be reasonable and understanding these things as well, because every woman is not going to get a finished product. Every woman is not going to get a rich man. Mm -hmm. Every woman is not going to get a man who's capable of doing these things. But what you have to look for are also in a man as well. You do also look for the intangibles and how he moves and how he treats you Mm -hmm. to really understand where he is. That's good. Yeah. That was a great answer. Was it? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ready for the next one? (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Okay. I'm only, I have my phone up guys because this is where the questions are just for those that are like, why she got her phone in her hand? That's why. Rude, right? No, I'm being present with you. I just happen to be looking at this phone because I'm reading. Okay. So you meet a girl and she is just as sweet as pie and you guys start dating okay. and you start going out. You're having great weekends together. And then you start to notice that when she goes out, she drinks a little bit too much. And I mean like blackout drinks. It's giving, oh, my baby wants to get loose and be free and have fun. Or it's giving, mm, I thought this was good, but I got to go. I got to go. You got to go? Yeah. And again, there's a guy out there for that. Yeah. Like, there's a guy out there that's going to want to drink with you. That's going to want to do that. But you're going to attract where you're at. Mm. At this point that I'm at in my life, I'm not even going to really be attract. I'm not going to attract that kind of woman mm. or be in synergy with mm. that kind of woman. Makes sense. Because first of all, she talking about how she want to drink. And I'm telling her that I all I can eat is fruits and veggies and drink spring water. <laughs> you know? So like, I, I'm not even saying tap. Yeah. Right. But what do you have? Yes. Do you have spring here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the spring. She wants... Bottomless mimosas? Right. She wants Ooh, bottomless mimosas. Right, we right, right. On the same page. Yeah. So, I mean, it's already a difference in values. That's what I'm saying. That ain't going to work. Okay, I have one more. Okay. This one's spicy. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> okay. You are dating a woman and you think this could be your wife. Okay. Okay. She is She is just giving all the things you need her to give. Okay. And she goes on a girl's trip. Okay, when she comes back, she's back from the girl's trip. She had a great time. Six months later, and one day before you're about to propose, you find out that she cheated on the girl's trip. Mm. It's giving. Over. Ah. That was easy. I thought I was, yeah, I thought it was going to be like hard. It was easy? All of these have been easy for you. She told me? Yeah. Or did I find out? She told you. Still over. <gasps> yeah. So it's so cheating is a non negotiable for you. It just cannot happen. <sighs> Let's even take context. Okay. Was we in a good were we in a good place in a relationship? No. We were in a bad place in a relationship. Maybe we were in a good place. You just told me it was giving everything. Yeah, it was, was everything. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to make it worse. 
Yeah, you're in a good place. You're in a good place. You're trying, you're trying to switch it up now? I did. That was bad. That was bad. Don't, don't We're be in like a me. great place in a relationship, and she cheated. Oh, well, no, it's better if you're in a terrible place. I'm not saying it's better. I'm not saying it's Maybe better. Maybe she's grieving. Let's say that she just lost. Well, well I can guarantee you somebody else is going to die. Yeah. So that's what she. That's how she handles her grieving? <laughs> okay, let's say you cuss her out the worst you've ever cussed her out because you came out of character for whatever reason, and you just pushed her and then she had to go well, on well to me that's just not now this is how you handle conflict you go you, you go get you get, get dick down <laughs> and if that's how you handle conflict then that, this is going to be an issue because i can guarantee you in a marriage we're going to eventually have conflict again absolutely so that's what i'm that's always what's concerning to me it's like these that's a sign because first of all in that example we were in a great space and you cheated that's abs like that person is Toxic as hell. Yeah. At that point. Like self sabotage. Literally unpleased. You yeah. can't please yeah, yeah, that yeah. person at that point. If we're in a bad place and you cheat, now this shows me you just have bad decision making. Mm. Right? You're an emotional, erratic decision maker. And when the lows hit, you dip. Ooh. Right? But so that's more so what I'm looking at. I'm looking at more so how you respond to these different situations in life. And I think that's what we all should be looking at, mm-hmm. especially when you're dating and in your singleness, evaluating somebody you really want to see. It's like my business partner that I have now, I've been in the trenches with this person. We made a lot of money together. Then we lost a lot of money together. Mm. Then we got it back. Mm. And we've seen each other go through these places spiritually, emotionally, mentally, with family. And that is how our loyalty was tested. Yeah. Right? Our, I mean, just about every one of the character traits were tested in the five years now that we've been doing business. But see, the thing about it is, it's the same thing with my lady. Mm. And if you fail in these, these are the easy tests. Mm. This is this is the light stuff. Let's not throw a mortgage, a bunch of kids, family on our back, and mm. these other pressures that's gonna come eventually with the world. How are you gonna handle that? It's no. It's a no. It's a no. Yeah, yeah. You know, have you ever been cheated on? It was, as far as I know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like it was back in like. High school. It wasn't nothing recent. Okay. Have you ever cheated? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I have cheated. Okay. I've cheated. Yeah. I have cheated. It was actually in that relationship I told you about. Did you tell them after? Did no. Did well, she, hopefully they don't watch this. Get up later. She don't know. It's given. <laughs> yeah, I, I cheated though. Just and that's the only time you ever did. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been in that many relationships. Ah. So, um, for real relationships, maybe like three, Mm. you know, but I'm pretty sure I could have been, actually, I I could have been cheated. Who knows if they've been cheated on, right? But I know I did cheat. I've never cheated. You know what it is? I'm not... No, never. I'm not a cheater. You know, because women, y'all be really, y'all have like these technicallys. No, I don't have any technicallys. It's access. Like people don't exist to me when I'm in a relationship. Like men, you get no access from me. It'll okay. be very shallow. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. I Side like, hug. I like that. Keep it. Yeah, because this is, I say this all the time. Access is like one drop of water dropping in the same place over time on a rock will split a rock. Oh, yeah. You put me in the wrong position, I will cheat. If I'm with a man that is, a, I'm a sapiosexual, you saying the right things, you doing the right things, you, what? If I'm with this man long enough, let's say I'm with him for six months and with nobody else, I will cheat. Mm. I'm a human with needs. So I say that to say, I don't put myself into positions where I know I'm going to lose. So I don't give access to myself, to men, really. Mm. I have my friends. Like my like real life friends that I've never crossed any kind of boundary with, and then I have um, business colleagues. Okay, well, I, I can respect that. I yeah. actually prefer the ladies in my life to have never no track record. Yeah, actually. no, because I think I'd eat myself alive. It goes back to that's not in and and it's not has nothing to do with my man. It's me being in integrity with myself. 
Because when I'm out of integrity with me, I shame myself, I guilt myself, I wrong myself, I rethink, I rethink, I overanalyze. I put myself in hell on earth because I did something that was out of character for me. If I wanted to step out, I should have just told my man, you know what, baby? I want to try something different. And either he is down with it or he's not. And that's what it is. But for me to rob him of his option to choose, I feel like that's, that's, it seems young to me. It's immature. It is. Even when I did it. Yeah. We were in a horrible place in a relationship. Mm. Horrible place Mm. in a relationship. So that was even, I even handled that situation. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't the right way to handle it, but. We live and we learn. We live and we learn. That's it. And and that's the thing. I, I just yeah. So to whoever it's not that I don't cheat because I'm perfect. It's I don't cheat because I know me and I'm not about to beat myself up again and again and again and again and again and again and again. That's not ideal. I can respect that. You know, is that weird? No. Probably I like bit. my uh, a woman to kick her own ass if she cheated. <laughs> and be disgusted with herself. I would really just be in shambles. Yeah. Really? But that just speaks to your values and what is you've already told yourself is unacceptable. Yeah, for me. The woman that you described prior that can have a healthy relationship and still cheat Mm -hmm. or be upset and then cheat, Mm -hmm. be grieving and then cheat, get drunk and then cheat. That says a lot about how she operates and her set of values. Mm. And I think that's just, I mean, the best predictor of the of the future is the past. Is the past. As much as we want to know, the past doesn't, baby girl. It doesn't. I want to hear that. Yeah, I see everything. I see everything. It tears what it tears. And uh, it, 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 it's exactly that. Yeah. I have one more question for you. For sure. This was so easy, right? Easy peasy, lemon yeah, squeezy. Easy. I knew it would be oh, so easy. <laughs> okay. Next question is. Mm-hmm. We here at It's Giving believe in growth. We believe in evolution. We believe Mm. in learning, loving, and becoming who it is that we want to be. And we believe in doing that through books. Mm. So what book has changed your life and why? Oh, my gosh. So many, right? Yeah. You're talking to a reader. You know what? Mm. We brought up Napoleon Hill. Okay. Which one? Man, Outwitting the Devil. Top five for sure. You talked about that book. You talked about the drifter concept. Yes. That's where it came from, guys. Yes. He wrote that book. I think it was like in the 60s or the 70s. And they didn't release it until, until the 70s and 80s. No. No, 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 no. And didn't he write it in like work. the 30s? No, 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 no. This one, I think this was okay. Listen, it don't matter. this is yeah, the documentation is horrible. <laughs> but no, they didn't release this. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, until like to the 2000s. Okay. Here's why. Mm-hmm. His family was just so shook because his information in his book was so controversial at the time mm-hmm. that there was no way they could have released it uh, being that just the con- the pure content that he had in there was so raw mm-hmm. and true. And also it, had a, it was spiritual mm-hmm. as well. And he interviewed the devil mm-hmm. in a way that you would have never imagine somebody do it. it was actually so genius and mm-hmm. so clever so poetic actually but filled with so much knowledge and gems that will you know give you a different perspective probably challenge your perspective uh but nonetheless um give you some tools that you can apply in your life to learn grow and evolve one of the most impactful books I've personally read. Mm-hmm. So Napoleon Hill, Out with the Devil. That's I love that book. That's such a great book. Yeah. Don't be a drifter, y'all. Do like not be Jim Rohn drifter. says, walk away from the 97%. Oof. Walk away. But don't get me started. because Sprint. <laughs> right. So guys, thank you so much for joining this amazing episode. We talked about so much. We talked about owning who you are. We talked about relationships. We talked about value systems. We talked about all of the things, relationships with none other than Tyshawn. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and blessing the audience today. You absolutely nailed it, killed it, destroyed it, wrecked it, leaving us in shambles. Okay. And guys, if you are interested, put your, um, put your information 
information below. Right? Yes. And we're going to randomly select three people so you can get your free deck of Hardly in Love cards. Yeah. Um, and I'll make sure to connect all of the links below. You guys, you def- if you haven't yet, you're definitely going to want to check out Hardly Initiated. I'll make sure that that's in the description below as well. And if no one has told you, you are freaking phenomenal. Bomb.com. Nothing can stop you but you, but you got to do something about it. Love you guys. Bye. <laughs>